Bro, that Dom Young's fast, Mate. eh? Bro, he's good. <laughs> Fuck. Sabi, man. Sabi is probably the quickest. Do you reckon Sabi will catch him? Oh, easy, bro. You reckon? Sabi's the quickest, man, by far. So is he? So he, he's quicker than um, Kolo? Yeah, by far. Actually, uh, first 60 meters, Tolo is probably the fastest yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Like, when he gets a bit longer, like 80, 80 to 100, Sabi is just cruising. <laughs> Hey guys, on this episode of Ebbs and Flows, we talked to Josh Schuster, up and coming superstar, one of the most talented boys coming through the NRL right now. Normally reserved, normally shy, but done us a big favor, jumped on and sat down on the couch and had a bit of a one on one. So, hope you guys enjoy the episode. Yeah, I was so young at the time, I was just, I didn't know who I was talking to. Yeah, there were some things that were said that, that hurt me a bit. Very expensive, living out in Manly. <laughs> I'm not a Chaboyevich yet. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs, the lows, ins and outs, fears and doubts on and off the field. I am your host, Isaac, but you can call me Ice. Shout out to my brand partner, Sporting News Australia, for helping you bring this production together. Excited today, uh, joined by Joshy Schuster, one of the most talented boys coming through the NRL right now, part of the Bird Gang, Proud Samoan, and first podcast. Yep, first podcast. First podcast, first podcast yep. so looking forward to sort of meeting him, bro. Thank you for sort of jumping on. That's all good, my pleasure, man. Um, yeah, so we're just going to talk about a few different things on yep. and off the field. Obviously, your name's one that usually comes through uh, the media a little bit lately. Yep. But like, first of all, how are you, bro? Yeah, I'm going good, man. Um, yeah, like I said, first podcast, so I'm um, pretty nervous. But um, yeah, um, grateful to be here. Yeah, good little game on the weekend. Obviously, going yep. down to Newcastle, we're sort of talking a little bit off air about a uh, few of the, the boys coming through. How do you feel like your form's going at the moment? Yeah, it's been good. Um, had a month off. Um, had to you know do a uh, reconditioning um, block, so um, yeah, uh, two games in and um, yeah, feeling confident. So um, with that reconditioning block is yep. was that something that was communicated to you like through Sebes and all that? Yeah, it was actually um, uh, my my decision. Uh, went up to this, went up to Sebes and said, um, you know, if I can have a month off, um, to you know to get my body right and um, get a reconditioning block, um, and I, if I look back now, it's probably. Um, one of the best decisions I made. So I'm mm. um, feeling, feeling fit now, feeling confident and um, yeah, ready to go for the rest of the year. Yeah, you look like you're in good nick, bro. So yeah, if I congrats good. on that and appreciate Thanks, all the hard work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, the Bird Gang, obviously, I, I got to um, train at Manly for one year yeah. and I got to meet like DCE and yeah. pretty good friends with him. Uh, you play outside of him in the sixth yeah. position. What's it like having someone like Chiz there to sort of guide you? He's always very calm, isn't he? Yeah, very, yeah, he very is. positive. Um, tell us about um, his leadership style. Yeah, um, I don't think I can really uh, put in words what a what kind of impact he's he's had on my career so far. As you know him, you're pretty close with him. He's one of the best blokes, man, off the field. Um, he, you know, he genuinely has has a care for for the younger boys coming through through the grades, um, especially me coming through. So um, to have him next to me, I still still pinch myself seeing him at training, to be honest. But um, yeah, to, to play alongside him is um, pretty special. What's the best advice he gives you? Is, is he more so a mentor on the field? Because obviously yep. he plays his own style and I know you play your own style of football too. And I feel like Manly have always just um, had very talented footballers yep. that can play outside structure. You're one of those guys. I yep. think Chez is one of those guys. Um, what's some of the best advice he gives you on the field? And then we'll talk yep. about off the field a little bit later. Yeah, for, well, for on the field, he's, he's probably main thing. He's probably His main advice to me was just to always back myself. Um, do what, do what's got you here, um, which was you know back backing myself, um, playing with, you know my natural ability. Um, I think yeah, his probably main advice was just back myself and play what's in front, and um, the rest will look after itself. Yeah. Um, so. We'll talk about but your upbringing, um, the yep. style that you play, and I think it's obviously very unique. Like you're a big body, yep. super talented, soft hands. Um, we'll talk about tempo like a little bit later. Yep. How did you come to be the player that you are? Did you look up to someone? Did you have older brothers that sort of um, play that style? Just playing court touch? Yeah, court touch. <laughs> um, ever since I was young, man, I've always, I've always done everything with the football. I've always slept with the football when I was young. Um, Every time I used to go to primary school, I used to have no books in my bag, just a footy ball <laughs> and footy shorts. So um, it sounds like all the footy yeah, boys, I reckon. But, yeah. but um, yeah, I've always had a big passion for the game, man. I've always loved footy, done everything in my football. So I think passion's a big thing for me. I've always loved, loved the game, loved watching it. And um, 
I've actually had two brothers. I think you played with one. Yeah, yeah, I played with your brother, yeah. Yeah, um, and I think they've paved the way for me um, since I was young and especially my dad. um, He's always just, you know, probably grounded me with the football. So, um, yeah, it wasn't for those three, I wouldn't be here. Who was your favourite player growing up? Billy Slater, man. Oh, was it? I was a big Melbourne Storm fan (laughs) when I was young. (laughs) Used to love watching the big three. Yeah. You know, done their stuff. Um, but yeah, Billy Slater was my favorite player. I mean, yeah. So, what what sort of age you got to the point where, like, obviously you said, like, yeah. you had older brothers that were doing like pretty good things. Yeah. What was the age where you sort of started to realize maybe I could make it? Yeah. And how did you get from Liverpool to Manly? Because it's yeah. obviously you're in a catchment area. Potentially, yeah. you could go Parramatta Juniors. You're yeah. at Westfield Sports. Um, you could have gone to Penrith. Why did you go to Manly? Um, so, I, well, I played for Mounties um, at the local, and I was a Parramatta Junior growing up. I was playing with like you know Matt Dory, Stefano, Yutukamanu, boys like that, and um, it was actually at a, a Parramatta trial where I had a random um, phone number that called me, and it was actually Bozo Bob Fulton, and um, just an immortal, just casually yeah, just calling. <laughs> then, you know, I was so young at the time; I was just I didn't know who I was talking to, and then he said, "Oh, um, yeah, we watched one of your games, and we'll, lo- we'll love to have you at Manly just for a little trial." So, and, um, yeah, ever since from there, um, I moved to Manly um, and I loved it there ever since I was 14, 15, yeah. Yeah, so obviously, um, yeah, pretty crazy that you've got yeah. content. What made you, what was the types of things he was saying to you or did he just make you feel wanted? Like, what was the types yeah. of conversations? Because not many people get to have a chat with him. Yeah, oh, I think oh, I sat down with my family at the time and they explained who I was talking to. <laughs> um, and... Um, <laughs> Sat down with the Fulton family, Scotty Fulton. Um, he was our recruitment manager at the time. And I think they just, you know, spoke to me and um, told me that I'd be a good fit at Manly. Mm. And yeah, a whole group of us from from out west uh, moved at the same time to, to Manly, which was which is comfortable for me and um, probably yeah, the best decision I made. Yeah, because there's not too many islanders over there, is there? Yeah, well, well, now it's probably the whole Northern Beaches, the <laughs> Islanders now. So, you know, um, at the time it was really good, but if I look back at it now, it's, um, it's pretty special to have all the boys there. Bro, who was a big part of your development? Like, bro, the, when I watch you play, and yeah. like I played half as well, like the, the amount of tempo that you can play yeah. with, like I, I don't see too many people know that at your age you know what i mean they sort of learn it as they get a little bit older yep. you played with a guy like fozzy who's just oh, over yeah, the yeah. line and quick yep. all the time bro who who taught you that i think oh, back to my childhood i've always just loved playing touch football um used to try new things flick passes all stuff like that um like I, don't, I think it just comes naturally to be honest I, I haven't really worked on my like tempo stuff you're talking about you haven't no i, haven't no. Really, I think it just came naturally um through the juniors and stuff just tried everything and i think it just crept in my game to be honest mm. yeah because bro it's crazy to watch and i was yeah. like bro it's amazing to watch like like i said like you played for a guy like fozzy and obviously you're trying to get his position yeah, over yeah, time yeah. but what were some of the lessons you learned from from playing outside of him when you were his back rower Oh, it was very, um, he's very strict, man. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants something, you have to run that line for him or else he's going to give it to you after. But, um, <laughs> man, it was a pleasure playing with Fozzie, man. He's the ultimate professional, as you know. Um, he's been in the game for a while. And if you don't listen to him, you've got to get ready for a spray. So, yeah. Uh, he's probably he's probably one of the best blokes I've played with um, so far in my career. How are you trying to find the balance between obviously naturally gifted yep. and like structure and yep. and the fundamentals of the game of like completing sets and yep. kicking? And I know you got like brilliant touches in you, but do you know how to find that balance yet? Or are any of your coaches talking about that balance yet? Yeah, we've been talking about it um, for quite a bit now. You're, um, you're listening? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to listen actually. But um, yeah, like I'm, I'm more of a eyes up footy, no matter what the coaches tell me. Uh, just play what's eyes up, like you know what's what's in front of me. I don't really listen to the coaches, to yeah. be honest, but, um, <laughs> but in a good way. But yeah, but um, yeah, I just play footy, man. That's just that's just my thing. I don't I'm not scared of um, trying new things. Yeah, um, I've sort of been your name's been sort of tossed up in the papers a little yeah. bit lately, and you're sort of talking about 
being a bit more professional yep. and taking on that. And you said you're at a crossroads in your career. At 21, that's kind of, yeah, uh, yeah you know what I mean? I, I don't yep. really, um, but like what's what's some of the lessons you're learning off the field to be a bit more professional? Yep. And I heard Brad Fittler talk about you where um, you live in Liverpool yep. and you train in Manly. Is, is it, it, yeah. Are you going to think about moving over or um, are you happy where you are? Do you feel more complacent out there? I'm definitely happy where I live at the moment. Um, trying to save as much money as I can living with my parents yep. because you know it's very expensive <laughs> living out in Manly. <laughs> I'm not a Chaboyevich yet, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully one day I get to move out Manly because obviously you know the travel takes takes a bit out of you. Mm. But um, yeah, talking about footy, but um, the prof f uh, professional side of things, um, I'm starting to realise now that you can't really there's no place to hide in on the NRL field. Um, and just learning along the way where like you can't really rely on your natural ability and your talent because it's only going to get you so far in a way. Mm. And I think I've come to realize that now as a professional uh, athlete. And um, yeah, there were some things that were said that, that hurt me a bit, but um, that's, you know, that's the reality of it. Um, I had to make a choice and a decision and um, I made that so. What were some of the comments that hurt you? Like saying that I need to get a release for Manly, stuff like that. And I'm talking about my salary and it's just stuff like that that really was unfortunate, but yep. it's out there now, so I just got to move forward. Yeah. Um, so you sort of, when you start to hear those sort of things, I've seen you sort of take a break yep. from things like social media. Um, how did that help you? Definitely. Oh, helped me a lot, actually. Um, was off for, for two, two and a half months. So um, not not reading stuff like that helped me a lot. So um, I just had to put my head down. And, you know, if I knew I had to work hard, um, the results will come. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty mature decision yeah. to make. Must be hard at 21. So like I'm here like 34 and yeah. like I've never been in your position in terms of talent in, in NRL, but like we've copped a lot of criticism and I sit here at 34 and sometimes yeah. I don't even know how to take it. And yeah. obviously you always want to bite back at different people, but I think it's a pretty mature decision that you've done, bro. Yeah. So it's pretty good on you. Um, so your debut, bro, pretty exciting yeah. time. Went yeah, up against Benji. Good. Benji, uh, one of the greatest shout outs that yeah. you could get from someone who plays a similar style of football to you. Yep. Talk us about your debut game. Were you nervous? Were you excited? Um, I wasn't nervous, to be honest. Um, like it's, I think it's a confidence thing, man. I've always, I love playing footy, man. And I think before kickoff, I was, I looked across the field and I seen Benji and I was thinking, I was like, <laughs> this is surreal, man. This is unreal, back to verse. Someone that I used to idolize, used to practice his steps at school, mm. used to flick past like him. But um, yeah, to, to said what he said after my first game was pretty surreal. Yeah. Um, so your coach at the time, obviously you built a pretty good relationship with him and yep. you kind of went through your little off season and he was spending time with you. Can you talk about that experience? Because I, I find that like pretty interesting yep. and you sort of made your preseason a lot longer yep. by doing all the work. What was all, like talk us through that experience. Desi? Yeah, Desi. Desi, oh. Yeah, he's a hard man, Desi. Um, <laughs> he's a different cat, man. Um, I think the best thing about him, he just says it how it is. He doesn't really, he doesn't beat around the bush. Do you like that? Yeah. It's, well, at the time, I didn't really like it because I was a bit <laughs> uncomfortable, but I see where it was coming from. But um, yeah, for him to, to stay back and to help me, even when he, um, even when he got sacked, he was still helping me train in, in the off-season. So mm. I think that speaks volumes about um, his character. Was that awkward? Uh, I think it was, <laughs> but um, <laughs> no one does. He just, he genuinely has a care for his players and um, to have him you know, by my side, um, to still train me, take his time out of the day, which which meant a lot to me. And yep. Yeah. Yeah. What about your coach now? Um, Seeps. Yeah. He was there when I was there and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed his company yeah. and I enjoyed his um, coaching style. Very much Melbourne-esque. Like yeah. he brought that whole style to Manly and at the time Manly was going through this transition phase with Trent Barrett and yeah. we had all the old boys there like Stuart and they ran the club and then he was trying to do all these things. But yeah. I think now it's his team. He's got a great coaching staff around him. What's some of the things you like about Seeb's coaching style? Yeah, he's... Probably the opposite of Desi. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit laid back, Seebs, as you know. 
Um, he's just, um, I like just the way he goes about his business. He's more, he's just calm. Let's, let's more the senior boys, um, takes control, mm. take control and let let us play footy. That's probably <laughs> one of the best traits I reckon. Just lets us play footy. Yeah, for sure. I remember when I had him as a coach, like he had a great eye for detail too. Yep. Like, and they were all like sort of really small parts in your game and yep. he'd always call you out on them, but he always done it in a like super in respectful way. way. Yeah. yeah. He was never trying to embarrass anyone. Yep. Um, but a really smart guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's really good. Yeah. We've got, a, we've got actually got good mixture of, you know, coaching stuff. We've got Jimmy Dimmick. He'd be perfect for yeah. you, wouldn't he? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially for the Islander boys. Yeah. Um, Jimmy. And we've got Flano, uh, Shane Flanagan as well, so. It's a good mixture we have, uh, my man. What's Flanagan's strengths? Um, Is he like the people he's, person? Yeah, he, he's our attacking coach. Yeah. Very smart coach. Um, he plays to all our um, strengths. You know, having Turbo at the back, Chez, me, and as our spine and Croaks. So, um, yeah, he's, he's just a really good attacking coach, man. He just knows what plays, what's best for us and our spine and our team. So, um, yeah, really lucky to have him. How do you like to play? Yeah, just off the cuff, man. Whatever I see, I just overcall it. Yeah. Arco, as, as you know. Yeah, Arco's Arco's the overcall. Yeah. Are you always calling it? Yeah, I always call it, man. Chess <laughs> hates me. Yeah, I go, but um, yeah, I just love playing what's in front. Do you like? Do you prefer like a wide four split or do you like to go off wider percentages and you're uh, at the back? Yeah, probably wider field positions. Yeah. Um, I like playing gray to gray and then coming back from at the back of Chess and linking up with Turbo. It's probably the, um, one of the main stuff, um, main plays that I like, yeah. Turbo's so great. Oh man, it's hard to explain him, man. He's just, he's he's on another level, man. He's just a beast, man. Like, I can't really explain what he does, man. He's just, whenever you want him, he's there. He's just, if he's calling Arco, you have to give him the ball because <laughs> he's going to score points for you. Yeah. Whenever you need points, man, you just look at him and you just give him the ball, man. He just does his thing. He's what just, a what about his brother Jakey? Who obviously <laughs> <laughs> just so, <laughs> just so yeah, much we, passion. We just eh? him in defense, man, Jakey. So um, he cleans up the middle, man. He looks after our ruck. He just cleans up so much stuff in the middle. So many things people don't see. Um, mm. Just the effort on effort stuff. He's just the beast, man. He can go all day. Plays mm. eighty minutes. Does his job and. Yeah, loves the game as well. How far do you reckon you boys can go this year when you boys are, yep. say everyone's fit, obviously yep. Jakey comes back from his calf, DCE gets through Origin unscathed, and yep. like I'll watch you guys, it's probably over the past couple of years, yep. there's been times where you've just bullied teams and yep. you guys got thousands of points in you, yep. then you come up into the bigger moments and bigger games and yep. something's just not quite there. How far do you reckon you boys can go? I think, oh, obviously you guys are going to say all the yeah. way, yeah. I think obviously you can go all the way, um, just need to all be fit. We just all need to stay injury free, I reckon. That's yep. probably the main thing, man, for us is stay injury free. Get a couple of wins um, together. And I think we've got a strong team, man. Our forward pack's killing it. Um, Tanella Paseca. He's, he's come, bro. A, he's the guy eh, at the moment. I think he's realised how, how big he is <laughs> um, to use his, for his advantage. But um, yeah, we've got a good forward pack and we just need our spine um, humming along and I think we'll be good for the year, man. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, obviously, we're about to roll into sort of Origin. Yeah. Um, next, is that sort of something that's on your radar? Uh, we'll talk about Samoa first, yep. actually. Um, talk about your sort of experience playing for them. And yep. growing up, obviously, proud Samoa. Yep. Was it always a dream to play for them or? Yeah, it was definitely a dream to play for Samoa. Um, all my family, all my uncles actually played for Samoa in rugby union. Because I come back, I come from a rugby union background. Yeah. It was probably only me and my uncle John that played for the Knights was only played rugby league in our family. So um, to represent them and all my family in Samoa was probably the highlight of my career so far. The uh, picture of you in the anthem, yep. um, you must look back at that and give yeah. you goosebumps. Definitely. Do you want to talk about your sort of time in the Samoan camp? And yep. obviously, like, I try to explain culture to a lot of people and it's it's hard to explain, eh? Like, yeah, I don't really understand. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's not to try and sound rude or anything, but like, I remember when I used to go play back and play for the Cook Islands and yep. like, you're just around sort of people that are, when you look at that person, they yep. look like you and they've grown up similar to yep. you and probably got a hiding the same way you the same yeah. reason you yeah. got a the Boy, same reason you got a hiding yeah. before you know what i mean yeah. so just want to talk about like that someone experience because they're like they're almost a power they yeah. are a powerhouse now, right now yeah that's how it's scary how good they've gotten so 
Um, just want to talk about your Samoan like week leading up to that game. Yeah, um, man, Samoan camps are the funniest, man. They're just full of clowns, <laughs> as you know, man. <laughs> Islanders, they're just the best to be around with. Um, heaps of head slapping on the bus. Mm. Um, you can't sleep on the bus or else you're going to cop something. But um, yeah, being around the boys, man, like, just, you know, you're so comfortable. Um, you can joke around. You can joke around with the coaching staff. It's just, they get you, you know, it's all on the top of way. But um, obviously, yeah, Samuel Camps are the best, man. Yeah, we, um, the not to go World Cup, was that, yep. was that your decision? Yeah, it was my decision. Just um, wanted to get yourself right? Or? Yeah, just wanted to get myself right. Because um, I knew I had to have a big year in the 5'8 role. I had to get my body right and stuff. So um, it was hard seeing them in, uh, making it to the World Cup <laughs> final. But um, I'm happy as for them. But um, yeah, it was definitely hard to see them um, going all the way. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's sick. And like guys like Crichton and that, just yeah. some of the moments that they come up He's to. A, I think I think a cool thing about when you learn about island culture when you go into camps and that, there's already a hierarchy system, isn't <laughs> yeah. there? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can sort of play around a little bit in, yeah. in NRL, but once you sort of go in and you've got Papa there and June's yeah, there, June's, you just got to do what you're told, don't yeah. you? Quiet down, they're the big boss. <laughs> big dogs, those two, so. And they'll slap you too. Yeah, you gotta listen to them. <laughs> you see that video of Papa like hitting his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. That was funny. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've seen you in a few interviews lately, and you say you want to be one, the best player yep. ever. Yep. Um, pretty confident statement, and I know you're a confident dude. Um, where does that come from? Um, I've always had the confidence when I was young. I knew what I wanted to do, and um, and I truly believe, man. Hopefully, well, one day that I will be the best player. And I know what it takes now, so um, it's just the beginning for me, so. What do you, what do you think stopping you from being that? Um, probably, probably myself. Um, probably took it for granted, the opportunity I had the last couple of years. Um, like I said before, like, I think I realize now that talent's not gonna get you nowhere and um, you know, hard work beats talent, and um, I know that now. So, mm. um, confident. Um, always been confident, and um, can't wait to see what the future holds. Mm. Who's your manager? Mara, Mara Taltak. Oh, okay. Are we, are we with Tyron Smith and all that? Is that the nah, same crew? Nah, nah, different crew. Different crew, yeah. Tyron. Oh, yeah. But what you, what's your sort of like? On obviously, you're a talented footballer, and you see. Yeah. Like I see players starting to move now as like sort of entrepreneurs. You're wearing yeah, some yeah. let's trot. Like, <laughs> what's what's some interest you have outside of football, or you just always uh, owned in at the moment? I love golf, man. I'm starting to you hit him all right. Yeah. Hit him all right. Uh, not really, but um, I'm getting there. I'm starting to play with the boys down in Manly, Mona Vale, and stuff. But um, after footy, I haven't really found anything yet. I probably, probably something to do with footy. Yeah, uh, I have to say some coaching. I think coaching would be a probably a good thing that. I reckon I'll be good at so, um, yeah. You seem pretty chill, bro. Pretty laid yeah. back, dude. <laughs> Just laid back, man. I'm not really a high person, but um, yeah. Just go about my business, I guess. Okay. Right, What's the plans for the rest of the year? Rest of the year, um, just want to play every every game for the rest of the year. I've been injured for the last couple of weeks. Um. So probably my main thing is just to stay injury free and um, play some good footy. Good man. All right, bro. I um, just want to say thanks for jumping on. Appreciate your time. Yeah, I know you're like good. a little bit nervous, yeah. bro. You can uh, really first podcast, man. Yeah, is it? Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I know you're a little bit nervous. Yeah, so really thank you for jumping on good and good opening man. up and sharing those experiences. So, bro, I appreciate you, my thanks, guy. Bro. Thank you, man. No worries. Thank you.